Uh, yeah, thanks for that introduction, and, uh, and also thanks so much for having me. I'm really grateful to be able to speak with this community of builders about what we're building and why we think it, it really matters. I'm Vasu, I'm a co-founder and head of engineering at Sauron, uh, where we're building the perception stack for the home, uh, and I'll tell you all about what I mean when I say that. Um, so before we dive into the details of the system we're building, I want us to get on the same page about what home security should be able to do and where today's systems fall short. So most home security systems, they're glorified doorbells. They're reactive, fragmented, um, fundamentally unaware. They're basically paid witnesses, right? So a burglar can walk up to your door, look straight into your camera, and walk away with no consequences, and nothing happens in real time. There's no understanding of the severity of the event or a proportionate response. And in some cases, they might even come back and walk away with your security system. Um, I was asleep when this happened in my home a few years ago. Uh, the camera recorded it, as you can see, but it didn't deter them. It didn't wake me up. It didn't alert my neighbors. And it didn't do anything in real time. And then it got stolen. Right, so that's, that's what we're trying to improve upon. This was less than two years ago, so state of the art. Um, so let's talk about what went wrong there. The system clearly saw something, but didn't understand it. And that's what we think the real issue is, a lack of perception. Without it, a camera is just a sensor, it's just a recording device, not a system that can think or act. And we're all familiar with this infinite scroll of garbage on the left, right? We probably all have it on our phones right now and have muted it. There's no spatial or temporal understanding. There's not any context, neighbor or stranger, dog or human. Who made that motion? I don't know. Uh, and if you have multiple cameras, they don't talk to each other. They don't coordinate. Again, they record, they don't think or act. Now, without spatial awareness and cross-sensor coordination, the system just can't distinguish between what's a real threat and what's just background noise. So homeowners get flooded with useless alerts, or, as in my case, nothing at all when it matters. Uh, so that's the problem we're trying to solve, perception. Now, if perception is the foundation of what we're doing, the immediate next question is, how do you make it usable? How do we surface that understanding immediately in a way that a person or a system can immediately act on? And that's where the interface comes in. This isn't just visualization, it's a canonical source of truth. This digital twin reflects the real-time state of your property, where people are, how fast they're moving, wh what direction they're moving in, and whether they're behaving normally. It's actionable perception. So when you step back and look at the system, you have real-time sensing, fusion, world modeling, intelligent, de intelligent decision making. It all starts to feel a bit familiar because we've all seen this stack before. We live in San Francisco, just not in homes. Uh, and so we believe that homes need a brain, just like autonomous vehicles. They need to be able to perceive in 3D, fuse sensor data, track objects across the entire perimeter of the home and make intelligent decisions. And so that's what we're building, a real-time perception stack to perceive and protect the perimeter of your home, not a glorified doorbell. So to, to bring this to reality, uh, this vision to reality, we kind of had to think in layers just like you would for any other autonomous system. So at the very base is perception. This is where we fuse the raw inputs from multiple cameras and other sensors, track movement across the property, and interpret what we're seeing in real time. On top of that is intelligence. That's where we reason about what's happening. Is someone just walking by? Are they walking their dog? Are they loitering? Are they approaching a sensitive area? Is this someone we know? Have they been here before? Uh, all of this context is what the system uses to decide what matters and escalate appropriately. And then finally, we have the interface, the part that makes it all usable. So the real-time digital twin we talked about, smart notifications with low false positive rates. This is the biggest pain point in today's security systems. Um, and uh, automated deterrence, so some ability to actually respond. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, it, it's the part that a user or a, another system can act on immediately. 
And it's all three of these layers working together, the perception, the intelligence, and the interface, that turn a bunch of sensors into something that can actually protect you and your home. So we're building, as part of this, we're building a single consistent model of who's doing what and where across the entire property. That's hard. The tough part isn't getting detections or tracking them. Uh, it's getting those detections and tracks to agree across multiple sensor streams, different viewpoints, asynchronous data rates, uh, weird home layouts. Uh, talk to me if you're planning on building a Japanese craftsman with a koi pond in the middle because I have questions. Um, all of that, though, needs to collapse into a shared understanding of the world, and that's where things get really hard. Those are our hard problems. Our sensor pods get mounted on the exterior of the home, and we then have to solve this global calibration problem so that we can track everything in a globally consistent frame. That's one of our really hard problems because every home is different. And, and so solving this for every home we go into is a unique and fun challenge. Um, we maintain a unified view of people as they move across the property, across multiple zones, um, despite occlusions or non-overlapping fields of view. Uh, and our goal is to do all of this in real time so that it's actually actionable. So once you have that unified model, we get into deterrence, which I alluded to earlier. You're not just watching or recording anymore. You're in a position to act. Perception gives you that agency. And so what this means is an escalation of uh, response based on behavior and not just motion. We let the system decide when and how to react based on a really high fidelity understanding of the environment. And when the system does decide that it's time to react, the entire house comes alive. Lights, sound, sirens, all coordinated in space and time across the entire home. The goal here is to continuously be disrupting the intruder's sense, sense, plan, act loop, such that they're constantly being prevented from making progress towards whatever they're trying to do. That's what deterrence is. Oh, I should also mention, you can also use it for less uh, uh, worst case scenarios, such as telling uh, a delivery person where to leave a package so that it's less likely to be stolen. I want this, for sure. Um, now, all of this only works because we're fully vertically integrated across hardware, software, and services, and we optimize the entire stack end to end. In a sea of generic cookie, cl cookie cutter plastic hardware, our house-mounted sensor pods are designed to fit in and blend in to high-end homes while being weatherproof and easy to install. We run everything, all of the detection, tracking, fusion, intelligence, on-prem, supporting low-latency, multi-stream inference with local only as a fallback mode so that our security system is running even without the cloud. And I want to emphasize that we probably couldn't have built this five years ago, to uh, Ulrich's point. The tech has caught up, and honestly, so have consumers. In a world where Waymo can navigate complex traffic interactions in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, uh, people are starting to expect that their home understands what's happening around it. And now we finally have the building blocks to meet that expectation. Efficient AI models, optimized inference, RTSP native pipelines, um, all of this enables us to build connective tissue, intelligence, and interfaces to turn these raw components into a real-time, reliable system that delivers on that promise. And critically, we've paired it with an expert human team, trained security professionals with uh, law enforcement, military, executive protection backgrounds who monitor this system in real time, intervene when needed, and partner with our AI to help it improve every day. So who's building this? Um, we've assembled a, an incredibly talented group of engineers and operators who've done this before, just in different domains and different industries. For most of us, this isn't the first time we're building a real-time perception system, but it is the first time we're applying that experience to a domain as personal and high impact as the home. And our system is running today in real homes and starting to prove itself. Uh, everything we've talked about so far is focused on security, and for good reason, because it's urgent, it's high stakes, that's where you earn trust. But once you've built real-time perception for the home, 
possibilities don't stop there. Security, I think, is just the, the beachhead because once your home has the ability to understand its environment, it can do a whole lot more than just keep you safe. And so, in summary, we're building the smartest homes on the planet and we're just getting started. If this speaks to you and you're excited about solving complex perception problems to build this unified model of the home for, our, for uh, uh, everyday customers, then um, come talk to us, let's build together. Uh, we're really excited to, to be doing this. And that's it, I'd be happy to take some questions. Hi, uh, this was awesome. Um, I just have two questions. One is the technical stack, is it for the sensors, is it 100% perception based or? What, can you clarify what you mean by 100% perception based? Uh, like are the main sensors, is it just with cameras that you're gaining this real time understanding? It, or is it's it not. We're experimenting with, like we're approaching this from first principles and saying, what happens if you consider the same sensors that you would use for a robot or self-driving car? Um, so it's not just cameras. And we're still uh, experimenting with a variety of modalities. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to talk more about that one-on-one. Okay. -on -one. Yeah. I mean, is there any way you could talk a little bit about how, you know, like a LiDAR sensor and just a camera sensor can overlap in real time? Yes, so that is, that is a really interesting calibration problem, right? You have these two sensing modalities and you want to register, register them into uh, a global frame. Luckily for us, it's a problem lots of people have already solved, and so we just need to adapt it to, to this domain where no one has solved it before. Um, there are aspects of that problem that become easier when you're mounting on a static home versus a, a robot that has to move around. And there are aspects of our problem that are more challenging just given uh, we're trying to fit this to a variety of different structures and, and there's not really that uh, repeatability of, of calibration. Yeah. And then, oh, can I ask one more question? Um, so I think we talked about this a little bit before. So I'm in the middle of trying to do a purchase order of a thousand cameras <laughs> and kind of what's going on with China is really screwing us. So I'm wondering how you kind of approach the right. supply chain. No there. idea. We're, right. we're still figuring it out too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's true for pretty much everyone else. Otherwise you knew something that other people didn't before you should have. What might this entire sensor suite cost? Maybe for like a house that big? Yeah, excellent question. So we are starting at the high end of the market. Um, this isn't gonna be a price point comparable with your ring doorbell uh, to begin with. And our goal is to really define what security can be for the residential space before figuring out how to distill that down to, to a more mass market product. So it is a premium product. So like 10K, 50K? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reasonable, makes sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. The question was, is there anything about this that wouldn't work in the commercial space but only works in the home? Uh, no, but nobody is building for consumers in the way that we're building for consumers. But the answer is no. Does it work 100% uh, in local also? Could you repeat that? Does this work 100% in local? In, you mean local, is it yeah, local? locally. Uh, yes, yes, that is a goal for us, is to have a system that could, that has a local only fallback for sure, even if some, some things happen in the cloud. Okay, amazing. Uh, hi, so first of all, is it a Lord of the Rings reference by any chance, the title, the name Sauron? <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> it is a Lord of the Rings <laughs> reference. Um, one more thing. So when you say that you have a lot of sensors around the house and you're trying to real-time monitor, um, are you, so you are not going to store any of the images or any of the sensor data that is coming from the house itself, right? Uh, if we store anything, it will be locally stored on-prem. 
Okay. Uh, even your uh, the perception stack also should be locally present and won't That's right. Come. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was really cool. Um, just curious about the onboarding process for the customer. What does it look like? Do you sort of do a scan of your house? And uh, the second part of the question is also around: uh, Do you can you add like custom rules, or is it just sort of like generic rules that you have and that triggers it? Yeah, those are both great questions. Um, the intake process is a challenging technical problem. Also, it's a it's a technical ops problem. I showed you that dollhouse. Um, that's part of the digital twin. How do we generate that for every home at scale? What is the level of abstraction at which that is still useful? Um, and how can we do it such that you could have a sales team go out to a customer's home, take a scan, and you know, a few minutes later show them what their app would look like? Uh, that is a very challenging problem, but again, um, Many of these problems have been solved in different domains, photogrammetry and sort of um, 3D model construction in the, in the um, construction space is a problem that a lot of companies have worked on and, and we're finding that uh, customizing it to our domain is challenging, but again, it's, it's, it's a challenge, it's not impossible. You know? And on your question of custom alerts, uh, that's absolutely a goal, is to allow the homeowner to control what they get notified about. Uh, I think a lot of security systems are now offering this uh, with varying levels of performance. So it's, in my mind, that's kind of table stakes. You kind of have to have that. Hello, are you guys creating a digital twin version um, outside of the architecture only, or are you guys considering an in, in interior environment? Yeah, so that, that goes back to, to this slide here, right? So we're starting on the outside of the home. And the way we think about it is you build trust by protecting the perimeter and then you earn the right to go inside the home. Uh, for security, maybe for access control inside initially, but then beyond that, there's just so many other applications that you, you could imagine once you've instrumented the home and kind of built this intelligence layer. Uh, but yeah. Another question is, um, how do you ensure security? Do you have any other like, crazy ideas like connecting to the drone system? <laughs> Absolutely. Providing a more invasive I, tool. I'm, <laughs> I'm very passionate about drones. Right before this, I spent four and a half years at Zipline. So uh, yes, absolutely in the future. Um, and, and you know, we've had a lot of uh, conversations with um, law enforcement departments that are using drones today and figuring out how to integrate with those uh, systems and, and share information ahead of dispatching a, a DFR drone as first responder. Um, is absolutely something we're thinking about. Great. People within the family, uh, maybe their data gets uh, deleted once in a while, so uh, maybe you don't have full, full log of when you come home and, and all that. Yes. Stuff. The question is privacy. Do we have we thought about? people's individual privacy preferences, absolutely. So one thing I'll point out, kind of an underrated um, benefit of having this dollhouse digital twin is that if um, all the customer wants is for that digital twin to be viewable by, uh, say, a, a, a monitoring agent or someone else in the household, we can do that, right? It's still useful to have that 3D activity without seeing the raw footage. Uh, but yeah, privacy is definitely something that we're, we're building in from, from the beginning, yeah. Great, let's give Vasu another round of applause.